Elliot, let's talk a little bit about how big a problem HE is. Uh, can you give us an idea of the epidemiology, um, the prevalence of HE? Yeah, so this, this is a, a good question. And sometimes when we talk about the number of admissions to American hospitals for hepatic encephalopathy, in many ways it kind of understates uh, the problem, in part because our ability to capture these things in administrative databases can be limited, and in part because these patients are amongst the sickest that are admitted to any hospital and cause uh, and, and have, are more likely to experience adverse events than virtually any other uh, patient. But in general, there's about 600,000 to a million people walking around with cirrhosis, maybe cirrhosis, portal hypertension. And at any given time, about 100,000 people have hepatic encephalopathy. And for a given year, somewhere between 25 to 40,000 admissions are happening in American hospitals for hepatic encephalopathy. And if you take a given cohort of patients with cirrhosis, like we follow from the VA or in, in Medicare, about 28 to 40 percent will develop hepatic encephalopathy within uh, uh, a few years. Great, thank you. In your opinion, do you think HE is underdiagnosed? I, I definitely think it's underdiagnosed. You know, the, I think it gets back uh, to uh, Dr. Flam's comments, is that we, we don't tend to recognize that someone has a problem with their chronic liver disease until they present with symptoms. But because the symptoms of encephalopathy can appear like uh, delirium in the context of an infection, oftentimes patients are thought to have cognitive impairment or even dementia, unless they're observed by a specialist or someone with a high index of suspicion for hepatic encephalopathy, I find, particularly in the patients referred to me, that there's a, a great delay in the recognition of uh, encephalopathy. And to that end, the best tools we have are to spread awareness, perhaps through discussions like this. Great. So I do want to talk about diagnosis and, and classification, how we classify HE. So Steve, let me start with you. What type of patients are you evaluating for HE and how do you evaluate them for that? It's a great question, Arun. You know, hepatic encephalopathy, when you have a cirrhotic patient, is very common, as Elliot said. And it, there is, we think about 40% have HE, but one thing you said was important, within a few years, if you wait long enough, it may be more people have encephalopathy. So this is not an uncommon entity. This is a problem that healthcare providers that take care of patients with cirrhosis will see. Now, if you know a patient has cirrhosis already, you should certainly think of hepatic encephalopathy when they have any mentation issues at all. And we'll talk a little bit about the diagnosis and the classification in a minute. Where it's trickier is when a patient doesn't have known cirrhosis. And one of the things I want to mention for the, for the healthcare provider audience is uh, what I would consider a pearl. And that is one of the signs, one of the first laboratory signs of cirrhosis in a patient, when you don't even know they have cirrhosis yet, is thrombocytopenia. It's missed all the time. Patients with, with, who are otherwise asymptomatic, they have routine labs, and the platelet count's 125,000. Occasionally it's missed, and if it's not missed, the patient's often referred to hematology, who does a bone marrow biopsy, finds nothing, and says the patient has ITP. Happens extremely frequently, and I'm willing to bet you, you could get any hepatologist. If I asked you if you've seen this before, uh, I'm many willing times. to. Many, many times. Many times. It happens all the time. Why do people get thrombocytopenia early? It's not abnormal liver enzymes, by the way, that's the most common. It's not jaundice. It's not INR abnormalities. It's thrombocytopenia. And I would beckon people in the audience, if they have patients with thrombocytopenia, if they're primary care physicians or gastroenterologists, look into chronic liver disease, even with a normal liver panel. Why do they get it? Because part of portal hypertension early on is patients get splenomegaly, the spleen and the liver are connected, and splenomegaly causes sequestration of platelets and a low platelet count. First up, now does everyone with cirrhosis have thrombocytopenia? No, but the majority actually do. So you, it helps you with the diagnosis of cirrhosis off the bat. And once you know a patient has cirrhosis, then you 
start to even pay closer attention to even subtle changes in mentation because this very frequently uh, represents encephalopathy. And we're going to talk about the spectrum of encephalopathy in a few minutes, but if you know a patient has cirrhosis, think about it.